Hello everyone and welcome to my review of The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. The first book published in the Chronicles of Narnia series, but the second in the chronology. And it carries through many of the themes found in The Magician's Nephew. The entire series is indeed infused with Christian allegory, and indeed it has real world allegories also. The I think I'll just go through some of the themes here and it deals with the personal responsibility and the wages of sin and price of redemption. Just because let's say a character is a child doesn't mean he or she is immune from the consequences of their actions. In our world we like to think that oh, nothing should happen to a child but unfortunately that's the world we live in, that it does happen. And no one is immune from consequence. Some sins are small and require a small price. Some sins are much higher. And in this case, Edmund was a vile traitor, a horrible person. He was willing to at best have his brother and sisters enslaved and being his subjects and seeing the cruelty that was seemed to be inherent in him that would not have been a pleasant event and if he was truthful to himself he would have realized that they were going to be killed and yet yet he sold him out. But he was not irredeemable. There was the one of the things that pushed him over the edge was the enchanted Turkish delight or the temptation of sin can like a drug that I think many people have seen it in their lives or seen it even if it was just on television. Many people deal with alcoholism or drug abuse, gambling, you name it. Anything can become an addiction and can be destructive. TV can be one of the most destructive. And if you've seen some of the television we have here in Ireland, you can see it can rot your brain too. But I digress. And going back, we see the allegory of Christ in Aslan. And he had to pay the price of the traitor. But being innocent, that brought out a great good. Because he was able to redeem Narnia, to free it from the White Witch. And this is the Christian allegory that Jesus, son of a carpenter, was executed as a criminal in our stead, rose and redeemed the world. Now that everyone wants to be redeemed, many choose to live in sin and eat their Turkish delight. And many don't want to stop eating. Now, Peter, to begin with, he became the most zealous and noble. He was one of the more humble and thoughtful as the book series progresses. He has little lapses, but he is the first to believe and stand up for others, for Lucy, in later books, when she says something and is not believed, 
He says, I failed to do that before, but now he believes her. He did not have to see, and yet he believed. He became more than a doubting Thomas. He did not need to see it with his eyes. Lucy was telling the truth. And that leads on to a something that is it's not something I'd picked up until I'd read through it this time. And that is the power of discernment. Now I had been aware of Professor uh, Kirk. Now if you if you're reading it in publishing order, which I suggest if you're reading through the first time, publishing order is much better because you know the story. But when this book was published, we did not know that Diggory had already been to Narnia. And all we had to go on that he was Professor Kirk listening to a story told to him by children. And most people will just ignore the story of a child. And most of the times it's that's a valid that might be a valid reason. But in this case choose. Well, he didn't have to choose. He could have gone along with what all of us probably would have done and believed the stories. But he looked beyond that. Looked at he took the whole truth, listened to her tale. Then he listened to Edmund's tale and listened to Peter and Susan. He got all the facts. And he'd probably known those children from the time he they'd already spent. And he asked, who is the more truthful? And they answered Lucy. Now Lucy's story was unbelievable. And that is what happens to many who tell the story of Christ. You see it. Look at the comments. You may even see in the comments here. They talk about sky fairies and sky daddies. You name it. And they obviously do not believe they are like Edmund. Mocking, dismissive, snide. Now it's You know what, if you really are so fundamentally believing that we are stupid, okay, but you don't need to be mean, just as a side. As Edmund was, Peter and Susan didn't believe her either, but they were nice about it to her. They spoke with her, yet they didn't believe. They were the doubting Thomases. But Professor Kirk looked at the story and he saw the truth in Lucy that she believed what she was saying she was not lying and at this stage Edmund too had been to Narnia but he lied he lied to look like the adult and keep that in mind because that will crop up in a later book I'll deal with it slightly here. Susan does also. Susan tries to look more adult. And I wonder, had did she really believe Lucy or have a doubt that maybe what Lucy is saying is true, but she wanted to look like an adult to Professor Kirk. I was more concerned with how she looked than the truth. Peter was more protective, but yet didn't believe her. Professor Kirk weighed up the options. Lucy said both had been, she and Edmund had been in Narnia. And then Edmund flipped and denied. Lucy told an unbelievable tale. Edmund told a believable one. But it was a lie. And that's just something to 
think about. And that is a wonderful way of teaching people about the Christian story. That to many it is an unbelievable tale. But it is true. Just as in this world, Lucy's tale was true. Now that's something I found wonderful on this read through. Now, some of the other themes in the book um, is there is a real world allegory to authoritarian, authoritarian regimes. The either be Nazi or communist or secularist or a monarchy, anything that is abused, anything where the boot heel comes down on someone. And I think most forms, if not every form of government, has been guilty of being the white witch or in her camp. And we see that happening in many of our so-called democracies today. And we see that in the stories of governments of the past or types of government. And it is a talking point that you can tell the story to a child and they'll realize that, like at the time, the Nazis and communists were, and communists still are, as are fascists, pretty evil. They're pretty evil ideologies. And you can tell a child in a in this way that you must try and resist this. Reading this as an adult, there's a lot more depth to this book and to the story and it raises talking points that quite frankly are unnerving. And that is the beauty of this book, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. Let's have a quick look through my notes and see is there any other thing to have a quick look at. No, I think that was that was pretty much it that I was going to talk about here. So I want to thank you for listening through this video with me. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you came up with any other themes yourself, please post them post a comment below. And let me know what you think. And please, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Or a thumbs down if you really didn't like it. But engage either way. Leave a comment if you want to, as I said, if you want to add anything to this discussion. And please, if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. And... I will be working on the next book in the series, The Horse and His Boy, very soon. And before I finish, I want to ask you to please check out my wife's Instagram channel, The Latina Views Ireland. There will be a link in the description. It's well worth checking out. Please, if you have an Instagram, please subscribe and support her work. And I want to... Thank you for listening to this video. Check out my wife's channel. And I hope to see you at the next video. Thank you and God bless.